I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast, For the Health of It, episode 24. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. What we're talking about today is not necessarily just the food that you eat and how bad it is, but just what happens when you go out to dinner, or you go out to lunch, and the chemicals you come in contact with, and then some of the things you're doing at lunch as well. We talked about soda. I do need to cover artificial sweeteners because I I would be remiss if I didn't talk about artificial sweeteners. Uh, Bad stuff. Of the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, the worst one you can put in your body is going to be artificial sweeteners. And you're seeing crazy people like me making a change because you're seeing now companies coming out with stevia sweetened soda. One of the big uh, soda companies from based in Atlanta, Georgia, is now has half cane sugar and half stevia, which thrills me. Not that they use cane sugar, of course, but why cane sugar? Because what happened is years ago, they used to use cane sugar as a sweetener. But then somebody came up with the brilliant idea of high fructose corn syrup. And high fructose corn syrup is cheaper and sweeter. So if I'm a soda company, what do I want to do? I want to find something that's cheaper and sweeter. Absolutely. Sounds like a great idea. And it worked. Obviously it worked. Soda is a huge industry. But the problem is that the word started getting out about high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is usually made with genetically modified corn, which is a whole other story in itself on how bad GMOs are. But fructose, when it gets into your body, has to be converted into glucose. Now, try to follow me on this one. Plain old white table sugar, half fructose, half glucose. Goes into the body, the glucose is used as fuel. The fructose has to be converted into glucose, and then it's used as fuel. Did you follow that? Say good, good. When we're eating high fructose corn syrup, it's 55% fructose, 45% glucose. So it's only 5% more fructose than plain old table sugar, which is still bad. But that 5% makes such a difference because that fructose, when it gets into your body, has to be converted into glucose. And if you do more than 20 grams a day, you're going to start producing something called uric acid. Now, uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. Now, I'm a chiropractor, my team of doctors. We work on pain all day, every day in our offices. And patients come to us every minute of every day with pain issues. And we can, if we gave you the best chiropractic care in the world, I don't know if we do or not, I'd like to think we do. If we give you the best chiropractic care in the world, but you're doing things like high fructose corn syrup, you're building up uric acid, uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. And what's uric acid famous? What disease? Gout, exactly. But all the joints can get uric acid in them and they hurt. That's not the worst part. Uric acid prevents the body from producing nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. And it helps lower your blood pressure. It helps with romantic function. helps with brain function. New research out now on Alzheimer's. Pretty clear that it's a circulatory issue. Wow. Doesn't that stink that the things you did in your life have led to the clogging of the arteries leading to the brain malfunction? So it's not a good thing. So a while ago, somebody said, well, high fructose corn syrup is good. And now we're going back to cane sugar. In fact, a lot of other countries won't use high fructose corn syrup. A, because they don't allow genetically modified foods, and B, they've done test markets, of course, and they found, let's say, Latin America, high fructose corn syrup doesn't sell as well as plain sugar. So you can buy soda in other countries, exact same brand, with different ingredients, especially sweeteners. Well, a while ago, somebody came out with the idea of artificial sweetener. Aspartame was a biggie. And aspartame is three components, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Again, don't worry about the chemistry. Aspartic acid, when it gets into the body, is an excitotoxin. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to and can burn out your brain cells. So we don't want that. So a lot of bad press from artificial sweeteners coming out. It's been linked to everything from cancer to heart disease to sexual malfunction to everything. So a lot of bad press came out. And so what they said was, we got to come up with something different. And that's why you're starting to see a lot of the soda companies now starting to introduce things like stevia or xylitol into their brands, and they're slowly going to keep bringing it into the brands until eventually, hopefully, these artificial sweeteners back out. The other problem is that artificial sweetener can cause you to gain weight. What? Sugar has calories. Artificial sweetener doesn't have calories. Well, let's talk about that. Studies uh, published in PLOS One 
found that chronic lifetime exposure to aspartame, commencing even in utero, produces changes in the blood glucose parameters in mice. Researchers used a dosage of aspartame uh, that approximate the allowable daily intake of aspartame in the U.S., which is about 50 uh, milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Not only was the aspartame found to decrease insulin sensitivity, it brought ha- wrecked havoc on your brain function as well. Countless occasions, optimizing your insulin sensitivity is the key to good health. What insulin does is it, you eat sugar, insulin is released, and it goes into the blood, and it goes into the cells, and it kind of acts like a key, and it opens up the cell and allows sugar to get in. So that's normal function of insulin. If you eat a lot of sugar, your body produces a lot of insulin, and its insulin is trying to open up all the cells and say, come on, guys, let more sugar in, let more sugar in. And then the body says, whoa, 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 dude, 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 hang on, dude. I can't handle any more sugar. So the cells become sensitive or resistant to the insulin. So now the cells are insulin resistant. They're not opening up properly and they're not letting the sugar in. Therein lies the problem. You become insulin resistant. What do we call that? Type two diabetes. Exactly. So now the sugar is floating around in your blood and sugar is a mild acid. And when you put acid in your blood, it irritates the blood vessels. And when the blood vessels get irritated, they get kind of scratches in them. Let's keep it simple. And the body lays down a scab. That scab is called cholesterol. So now cholesterol oxidize, stick to the artery walls, and you've got hardening of the arteries. So that's why diabetics have so many circulatory issues. It's a circulatory issue and it's a neurological issue because the acid buildup of sugar can affect the nervous system. Once again, I'm a chiropractor. My team of doctors are chiropractors. And we're working on getting the nerves working properly from a physical standpoint, giving you adjustments. But you then have to take care of the chemical aspect of it. And that's why we have these shows. Oh, by the way, if, you, if the first time listening to the show, or even if you're a regular listener, we have a podcast. It's called For the Health of It. And you can go to uh, Stitcher, Google Play, and iTunes and download my podcasts. And then you can binge listen. If you go to my website, we have hundreds of hours more shows and videos on the website as well, drjoe.com, and you can watch and listen to other shows. And every day, day doesn't go by where somebody doesn't stop me in a store, in a street, in a restaurant, and say, Dr. Joe, I've been watching your videos. I've been listening to your audios. Oh my God, it changed my life. Thank you. And that's pretty exciting. And it's not just from the general public. Doctors, nurses, hospitals, medical schools, are now reaching out and saying thank you for your show because this is information we've never heard before. I had lunch with a doctor the other day and he said, do you ever take on interns? And I said, well, not usually, but sometimes, why? You wanna come intern with me? And he said, no. He says, my daughter is studying kinesiology, which is the study of muscles and movement. And she has never, and I've never heard of what you're talking about, the structure and how bones can pinch nerves and the nerves can affect the muscles. And he says, I would love for my daughter to internship with you. Now, here's a medical doctor asking me to have his daughter internship with me. That's pretty cool. Well, with us, my team of doctors. So it's pretty cool. So the, the world is changing dramatically. And we're finally, the things I've been talking about for 35 years are finally now mainstream. And that's what excites me is that people are getting excited about this. So anyway, I digress. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, sugar, uh, asp- uh, artificial sweetener. Aspartame also, exper- aspartame uh, consumers, they did this on mice, but it works on humans too. Significantly higher weight gain compared to the control group. Female uh, rats or mice weren't affected as much as men, but it still created something called visceral fat. Now you have organs and around your organs, you have fat as a protective layer and as insulation. But if you have too much visceral fat, like the big beer gut, that's visceral fat, fat around the organs. And that becomes a very serious issue because the organs don't work properly. And we talked a little bit earlier about hormones. Well, if you're doing, if you have a lot of fat in your body, fat becomes a living, breathing organ and it produces something called estrogen. Estrogen causes you to lay down fat, which produces estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat. So fat begets fat is what it is because it's it's hard to lose weight. It it sounds sounds silly. It's hard to lose weight when you're fat because your body's producing this estrogen. So you're getting estrogen from things like uh, estrogen compounds, cash register receipts, plastics. If you have micro, never, ever, please, I'm on my knees begging you, don't ever put plastic in a microwave. First of all, you shouldn't use your microwave ever anyway. But if you do, never put plastic. Because when you heat it in a plastic, a little bit of those chemicals are released into the food and you're eating it. Even don't put plastic wrap on top of it. Uh, in fact, one of my bosses was joking with me. He says, what am I supposed to do then? I said, don't use your microwave. Okay, that makes sense. 
The only good thing your microwave is for, and there's some good here, what you can do with your microwave is at the end of the day, take your sponge that you wash your, your dishes with in your sink and put it in a microwave for about 30 seconds. Not much longer, it'll catch fire. So maybe 20 seconds, depends how strong your microwave is. And the radiation from the microwave is actually going to kill the virus, germs, and bacteria. So if it can kill the virus, germs, and bacteria, it's also going to kill any good things in your food as well. So that's why I don't recommend your microwave ever under any circumstances. So we talked about how it, it affects you, uh, the visceral fat. Aspartame-fed mice of both, fat, both sexes also elevated fasting glucose levels compared to non-consumers of aspartame. And this was studied in uh, the journal Diabetes Care. So it's being published in major medical journals and people still aren't getting it. I still have patients come in and say, well, I'm a diabetic. My doctor said I should drink diet sodas. Sorry, folks, that's old research. It's not good anymore. That's what's so good about this show. It, it, it's, it's all the cutting edge stuff. Aspartame can alter the micro, micro bacteria in your colon and throw off the balance. It's called a, a microbiome, the bacteria in your colon. The journal Experimental Clinical and Experimental Rheumatology revealed the potential risk between aspartame and irritable bowel syndrome. How many people have digestive problems? Gas, bloating, acid reflux, diarrhea, irritable bowel syndrome. A lot of you, I know that because you come in our offices every day. And that's associated with something called sucralose. Okay, a aspartame is the blue packet. Sucralose is the yellow packet. Now, sucralose is uh, it's a chlorinated hydrocarbon. So what we do is we take sugar and we add chlorine to it, change the molecular structure. And so in theory, what's supposed to happen is you eat the sucralose, it gets into your, you taste sweet, but you don't absorb it in your colon and then it just passes out through your body. Make sense? So what's happening is when you take in sucralose, it acts as antibiotics. It can kill off the bacteria in your colon. And that becomes a problem because you need the bacteria in your colon. 80% of your immune system is where? In your colon. So the sucralose is like taking an antibiotic, and that's very bad. And if the bacteria in your colon changes, you could actually gain weight. There are studies that show that people that are overweight have different bacteria in their colon than people that are skinny. And in fact, one of the studies, one of the procedures that's being done now, I think it's a little weird to be honest with you, is a fecal transplant. They're taking the fecal matter from skinny people and putting it in fat people to help them normalize their colon. So if you're doing that, let's assume you're doing something crazy extreme, like a fecal transplant. And then you're doing sucralose. You're killing off the good bacteria. So why would you want to do that? And then that can cause you to gain weight if you don't have the, um, the right types of bacteria in your colon. This, this was studied in a, published in the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health. Sucralose uh, reduces the amount of good bacteria in your intestines. Ready for this? by up to 50%. Wow. I think this show's important. Darn right it is. Now, a while ago, years ago, I was always talking about trans fats and how dangerous trans fats are. So I was happy to report that trans fats are being banned. Yay. Makes me happy. Maybe I had a little something to do with it. Um, and they're removing hydrogenated oils. Good, because they've they been linked to heart disease. But now comes a problem. So we got rid of these fats from fast food restaurants or any type of restaurants. So what the companies did is they have to do something that's cheap. So the restaurants are reverting back to using regular vegetable oils like peanut, corn, and soy uh, for the things they're frying, of course. And these oil de degrade into toxic oxidative products when heated. Oxidated fat, when it gets into the blood, can stick to the artery walls, the oxidation of the low-density lipoproteins. A lot of chemistry there, I know. So it's interesting, Norway, one research group trying to assess the effects of, uh, on workers' health in restaurants. Here's your quote. The volatile compounds are very hard to study because they're unstable. They're hard to isolate. One thing they did was simply show that these products exist. There's a whole category called aldehydes, which are particularly worrisome. A group doing the research on animals have found that fairly low levels of exposure, these aldehydes in animals tremendously increase uh, inflammation which is related to heart disease. Oxidation of low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is thought to be the LDL cholesterol that becomes dangerous, that increases your risk of heart disease. There's also evidence that links between aldeh aldehydes and Alzheimer's disease. They seem to have very severe effect on the body. So we took out one bad fat and we replaced it with another bad fat. So the FDA got rid of the trans fats. Restaurants began using regular oils instead. 
And they were the cheapest possible option. Of course, you're running a restaurant. You want to save money. What the FDA didn't consider is the literature about oxidative products of things like soy, corn, um, and other oils like that, canola oils. When you implement a law, you're supposed to look at the risks. This is the quote from this researcher. What happens if you implement a new regulation and it actually has adverse side effects, which in the FDA didn't look at that according to this researcher. So once again, whenever you heat fats to a high temperature, there's a problem. Uh, somebody said the other day, because I talk about taking omega-3 fatty acids and I put them in uh, Dr. Joe Super Greens. We put uh, chlorella and spirulina, which is a great source for omega-3. And they said, well, Dr. Joe, I eat fish every day. There's my omega-3s. Two things wrong with that statement. Number one, if it's not wild caught fish, if it's farm raised, it has essentially zero omega-3 fatty acids. Second thing is when you cook the fish, you heat the omega-3s, which are very volatile, and they're destroyed. If you buy an omega-3 fatty acid a supplement, it's always in a brown bottle or dark bottle. So that sunlight doesn't degrade it. Imagine putting it on the barbecue. So silly you for thinking you're eating fish and getting omega-3 fatty acids. Not a good idea. I use uh, algae oil as my omega-3 source. Uh, it's the purest form and it's a little more expensive. The next best would be krill oil. And then the third best would be fish oil. But if you're going to do the fish oil, make sure it's certified mercury free because mercury can affect the nervous system. And once again, my team of doctors and chiropractors, what are we looking for? We're looking for a normally functioning nervous system. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, muscle weakness, chances are it's a pinched nerve. And the easiest, quickest thing to do is get the bones put back in place. Pretty simple. That's what we do as chiropractors. Number two, we check the digestive system to make sure you don't have acid reflux or heartburn. We want to make sure that that's working. We can gently massage or pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. Then we want to get you on a good diet. Get you on fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, at least Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I would add to that Dr. Joe's B vitamins and Dr. Joe's adrenal support for most people as well, so that you're getting the, 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 the minimum, the best bang for your buck. So if you want to come see us, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, you can go to my website, drjoe.com, and make an appointment in the Atlanta area. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. If you want to order the supplements, if you want to see the other supplements we have, my books, if you want to listen to archive radio shows, podcasts, drjoe.com. And it's there 24 hours a day. Articles I've written. It's a really good website, actually. Uh, but we'd love to have you come see us, not just for you, but your friends, your family, and your children. Because if children have straight spines, they grow straight. If they're crooked, they grow crooked. If I could change one thing in my life, I would change the fact that I would have gotten chiropractic care since I was born. Because I see the lack of a better word, miracles that happen when people bring their children in and people that have been under chiropractic care their whole lives, just how healthy they are. And we get you on a good diet, get you on the supplements. It's, it really is a no brainer. Why wouldn't you want to do this? It's the least expensive, most effective form of health care for certainly for back pain, but it's also great as an overall health protocol. Like I said, most people have insurance plans. They don't have a health care plan. Health care plan is coming to see us. So my doctors can put together a treatment for, for you. So again, the website's there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, drjoe.com. Love to have you come in and see us. We would love to be your doctors. All right, before I run out of time, which I always do on these shows, I want to give you tips to avoid toxic chemicals, things you can avoid, things that you can do every single day. Buy and eat fresh organic produce. And if you're going to eat meat, it's got to be organic. Now, the reason is 20, 30 years ago, we didn't have to worry about steroids and hormones, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, genetically modified foods. And now we do. So if you're going to do animal products, I don't. I haven't had animal products in over 32 years. I'm fine. You'll be fine. You're going to get protein. You're going to get calcium. Don't lose your minds. I'll teach you how to, and I'll teach you how, but you don't even need me to teach you. As long as you're eating plants, fruits and vegetables, you're fine. So stay away from those toxic chemicals. Reduce your amount of animal products the best you can, of course. And that's all animal products, including dairy. You want to do organic. Eat mostly fresh, raw, whole foods. Processed and packaged foods are a common source of chemicals like BPA and phthalates. So fresh is best. Frozen is next, and then cans would be our, our least favorite if we had to pick one. So rather than eating farm-raised fish, you want to make sure that they're wild-caught fish. That's what we talked about earlier. So make sure they're wild-caught. Uh, much better like Alaskan salmon is wild-caught. Atlantic salmon, by definition, is farm-raised. And most of the fish you're eating is farm-raised. And I really want you to stay away from that. It's really not a good source of food, although you think it might be. Consider skipping the receipts. We talked about that. Don't get the receipts. They have bisphenol A on them in many cases, and you want to get that out of your life. Buy products that come in glass rather than plastic or cans. These plastics and, 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 can, and cans can leach out. And if it says BPA-free, hopefully it is, 
but they might use BPS. Once again, try to stay away from canned foods. Now, I have some canned foods at my house, canned beans, and, and, and a lot of times that's because if I just didn't go shopping or if I just need an emergency, I've got some reserve. Now, I always buy organic. And organic, you're less likely to have the BPA. And I try to find ones that say BPA-free. Once again, doing most of the good stuff is going to really make a dramatic difference in your life. There will be times where you're going to mess up. I get that. But 95% of the time, if you're doing it right, your body's able to deal with this chemical onslaught. When it's 95 or 100% of the time, that's when you have a problem. And when you have neck pain and back pain and shoulder pain, that's a physical stress on the body. And many times that's so easy to fix. Go see the chiropractor, get the bones put back in place, follow their recommendations too. I was covering for a friend of mine the other day on a show and somebody called up and said, my husband went to a chiropractor twice and it didn't help. I said, listen, did you ever go on a bad date? Yeah, did you give up on the opposite sex or whatever, whoever you date? No, okay, so yeah, give it a little more time. Two, I, nobody can fix people in two visits. That guy wore sandals and that was 2000 years ago. We're not that good. It's gonna take a little more time than that. Glass baby bottles for infants. Please, I'm begging of you. Please, please, please. Glass baby bottles for infants is very important. And make sure it's BPA and BPS-free nipples if you're going to put them on the bottles, of course, too. Uh, filter your tap water and your bathing water. That's really important. I have a whole house water filter. Um, if you go to my website, we have some water filters there. If you want to get one for just under the sink, drjoe.com. But filter as much water as you possibly can. It's going to get a lot of toxic chemicals out of your life. Look for products made by companies that are earth-friendly, animal-friendly, sustainable, certified organic. I know that sounds airy-fairy and woo-woo, but now it's cool. 35 years ago when I got into this world, it wasn't cool. Now, we're trendsetters. You guys are so cool. Yeah, well, that's why I've been doing it for so long. That's why I'm good at it, by the way. Just talking about maybe doing a cooking show, actually. I don't know if I have time. I, I, I'll, I'll make time for that. Uh, I have a, a, a vacuum, a robot vacuum. I won't give you the brand name because they're, <laughs> they're not a paid sponsor. I love it. And I don't have any carpets in my house. Um, so I push my button when I go out, cleans the whole floor of my house. I come home, dump out the dust. It's back on a charger. It goes back to its own charger. And the next day it's ready to go again. I love that because I keep the house clean. I don't even know if I have a vacuum anymore, to be honest with you, a standard vacuum. But please keep your floors clean because dirt, and dust, and toxic chemicals can build up on your floors. And if you do have the opportunity to get rid of your carpet, absolutely positively get rid of it. Pre-finished hardwoods are great, and then uh, tiles are great as well. A lot easier to clean, a lot less toxic chemicals in the body. Uh, make sure you get a mattress that doesn't have a lot of chemicals in it. I know one company asked me if I would uh, endorse a mattress, and I, I spent several months looking for them, checking them out, and it turns out this one mattress is really a good mattress. It's awesome. Very low chemicals. No, it's called off-gassing, very low off-gassing, um, and so I was willing to endorse them. But be careful with the mattresses, the cheap ones especially oftentimes have things like formaldehyde off-gassing them. That's a, that's a problem. Children, make sure their toys are BPA-free. And if sounds strange, but uh, you, if, if you can put it in a dishwasher, even better still. So if you want to wash your dishes and along with your kids' toys, that's really a good idea. Natural products. I use something called Castile Soap. And it's amazing. When you use Castile Soap, it goes on so easily. It rinses off so easily. And if for some reason... I have to use a non-Castile soap. Like I, I, I went, uh, went away a while ago. as a, a, a singer who I really enjoy up in North Georgia. His name is uh, Cy Timmons. And I hadn't seen him in years. And I went up to see him and I, I, I got a bed and breakfast to spend the night. And I forgot my shampoo and my conditioners. So I used the commercial one. And boy, the soaps and the conditioner, they just stick on your skin. So I like Castile soap, uh, fragrance-free deodorants, not antiperspirants. Antiperspirants have aluminum in them. Not a good idea. Now, folks, I'm running out of time. So if you want to listen to this show again, go to my website, drjoe.com, or go to my podcast for the health of it. It's on Stitcher, Google Play, and iTunes. And listen to the shows because I know I talk fast, but I got a lot to cover. I didn't cover a fraction of what I wanted to cover. I mean, if, you, if you're watching video, these are all the notes I was going to cover, and I covered, what, three pages, four pages. So if you want to listen to the shows, please uh, subscribe to my podcast for the health of it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. We send out, everything goes on YouTube as well, uh, videos and audios. A lot of times I'll do a live lecture. I'll put the video there as well. Uh, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, drjoe.com in the Atlanta area. That's in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love to be your doctors. For neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, stop suffering needlessly. Stop being in pain all the time. Let us come work on that, but also for your overall health, for your nutrition, for your digestive issues. We'd love to be your doctors. 
If you want to get the supplements, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the B vitamins, uh, we have an adrenal support. We have a bunch of other ones too. All on the website, drjoe.com. Also available on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, you can order from there as well. But we want to get you well and keep you well. And I'm, I'm spending my entire life trying to make it as quick and easy, as inexpensive as possible. So we would love to be your doctors. We accept most insurances. But if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, make the move. Get off your fanny. Do it right now. DrJoe.com. We want to be your doctors. Hey, folks, thanks for listening. Catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on a WSB Radio app.